Well, hello everyone. Today we are joined by Kate Nordstrom, the Executive Director of The Great Northern, an outdoor arts and ideas festival that celebrates Minnesota's famous winter over 10 days with a variety of in-person and virtual programming. The Greater Mississippi Partnership is a lead sponsor and partner of The Great Northern this year uh, because the festival is a major opportunity to pull together and share stories about the people and activities that make the Minneapolis-St. Paul region distinctive uh, and tell those stories, not only across our state, but across the nation and the globe. Um, and with its focus on finding solutions for climate change, the Great Northern is also a step that we're taking as a regional partnership to advance the new climate economy. So welcome, Kate, and thanks for joining. Thank you so much. Thank you for um, for teeing up Greater MSP sponsorship this year, and we're so grateful to have you guys as a partner and um, for this opportunity to talk about the festival. Well, so glad you're here, and we've, we've had a lot of exciting conversations to date and can't wait for it to get started. So the festival starts on January 28th, and this has evolved over the last few years quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the Great Northern's history, who it's for, and what people should expect from the Great Northern, especially in this time of COVID? Sure, yeah, so the festival began about five years ago um, and it started with three annual winter events. So the St. Paul Winter Carnival, which is now at its 135th uh, year anniversary, so it's been going on for so long. Uh, the City of Lakes Lopit, which is a Nordic ski um, festival and that is around the Chain of Lakes as well as at Theater Worth Park. Um, and the U.S. Pond Hockey Championships, which happens on Lake Nokomis now um, every year. So those three annual events came together and they banded as founding partners of the Great Northern um, and decided to have all of their events within a 10-day time frame. So that was kind of step one. Um, they set up the Great Northern as, a, um, as an entity that kind of kept them all together as partners, but also produced uh, original content. And so the, the Great Northern is its own nonprofit. Um, we are now uh, presenting uh, work that is complementary to what the founding partners do. Um, so a lot of arts and ideas uh, programming, you spoke to climate focused programming. Um, and I'm the executive and artistic director um, wearing both hats at the moment. Um, at the Great Northern and have been doing this work there for about a year now. Um, so the Great Northern is a festival that is seeking to invigorate mind and body in winter. So we are calling people who are interested in, in doing just that. Um, the programming speaks to time and place, uh, environment and climate, arts and culture. Our winters here in the Twin Cities are cold and they're creative um, and the Great Northern is set up to be an exploration of that. So with COVID, um, as you referenced, it's a weird uh, a year to have a festival um, and we aren't um, encouraging gathering, of course. So we are setting things up so that people have prompts to get outdoors and have um, things to do, uh, but these are not opportunities to gather as large groups um, as we would in a typical year. Um, we also have virtual events and performances that would have happened in on stages that will be online this year, panels, you know, the same. Um, but we have tried to get creative with how we repackage content. So some projects um, that would have been live are um, reincarnated into podcasts or um, commissioned writing, um, as well as um, opportunities to get outdoors kind of on your own, but share yeah, share with one another. Um, there's site-specific art that people can go see on their own time. Um, there's not a specific time that everyone goes to this thing together. So we're just um, finding opportunities to get people um, moving, and active, um, you know, share some light during this dark winter that we have. And it sounds, I mean, there's a lot of different kinds of activities to engage different people in different ways, right? So Absolutely. playing yeah. hockey, experiencing an art installation, you know, participating in some sort of a, a thought leadership panel virtually. Yep, yeah, I mean, and it is all a reflection 
of our season. You know, um, in winter, we need to get fresh air and we need to have um, reasons to get out outdoors. Um, some of it, us need harder prompts than others. Um, but we also need uh, to invigorate uh, mind and um, and heart. And you know, this I think right after the new year is a, is a very um, opportune time for us to think with intention about how we want to build up uh, vigor for the year ahead. And there, um, in winter, sometimes you know that intention needs to be. Um, all the all the stronger. Um, sometimes some of us uh, keep to ourselves and our homes, and you know, kind of withdraw. Um, and that is um, anyway. The, so so yeah, the, this festival is looking to um, just give people some some options. And I think we really need it right now. I do personally. Yeah, I mean, everyone's seeking connection, inspiration, um, exposure to new things. Um, I guess if I would have known what was ahead in 2020, I would have really kind of upped my winter vigor uh, <laughs> early last year. So I had the momentum to carry all through the year. Um, we talked, we mentioned climate and that's a, it's always been there, obviously in the context of the festival, but how has climate change become a really central part of what the Great Northern is and like, why did that happen? Yeah, so we want to do more than celebrate winter and um, do more than explore winter. We want to also be advocates for protecting winter. Um, and temperatures in Minnesota are rising at a faster rate than elsewhere in the states. Um, that is uh, that is a fact, and that affects our winter. And so I think as we you know use the Great Northern as a platform. Um, to think um, to, to you know, think about the season and all it can be, we also need to acknowledge the changing scape of, of winter here and what that means both for on an activity level, you know, can we, will we always be able to go outside and play pond hockey or um, have snow and, you know, um, and, and get outdoors in, in ways that maybe we, we used to, you know, when we were young, will that be our future? These are good questions to ask, um, but it also has, you know, global implications and thinking beyond just what winter um, means here. Um, I think looking at the changing um, landscape of winter is important for us to do. I think like using this, this festival um, that uh, where we share joy together in the season, also can have a serious thread um, where we think about um, climate solutions and talk about um, what we can do together to keep keep winter as we know it and love it uh, as it is. Uh, part of the, the regional strategy, you know, in for Minneapolis St. Paul is about the new climate economy. And so GRMSP has been a partner with the Great Northern to bring a couple of kind of big, deep conversations, one around global food and agriculture. Uh, with the Embold Initiative. Yeah. Um, there's so much that has to do with climate as it relates to uh, the food we consume and how we consume it and with air culture, which is such a part of our economy and our culture uh, in the state of Minnesota. And then also on energy and some rapid and exciting um, innovation evolution that's happening on the energy side. Um, I'm, I want you to do kind of a straight pitch to people because I think people are interested. They might be thinking like, is this for me? Like, what would I do? And how would I learn more about it? So, you know, in the commercial spirit, you know, in, let's invite people to come and do this. Oh yeah, for the Great Northern at large or the yeah, climate? Great right? Northern. Okay, yeah. So, well, the Great. For, I'll say you can learn about all of our events on our website, which is thegreatnorthernfestival.com. Um, so there's all sorts of events um, for very different types of people. Um, most of the programming is free. Uh, some e events have um, a low ticket price, um, but the categories of uh, programming are um, public art, ideas in climate, food and beverage, outdoor active, and performance. 
So those are the different buckets. And on our website, you'll see, um, you can search by category, kind of depending on your interest. If you wanna go see what's, what's going on outdoors or more the sporting side of things, you look at outdoor active. Etc. So, um, so that's very navigatable. Um, we have a lot of programming that get that gets you moving, um, thinking, and motivated. I hope in winter, um, we have just to give you a little sense of some of the projects. We have this experimental walking project from a local architecture and design duo um, named Dream the Combine, and they are issuing five different. Uh, prompts for winter walks. They're going to be um, giving people instructions via text um, during the festival. And there's going to be a way that we congregate or we um, share all the experiences that people have through audio, through video. Um, and, and we'll be sharing that in a central source. And then there will be a piece of art that is created at the end through these different walks that we're doing by ourselves maybe, or just with our family, but together we're going to make a composition, which is pretty cool. Um, there is, like you referenced, the Climate Solutions Lunchtime Series, which is just really exciting with different voices, different lenses on climate solutions. So um, there are people talking about climate justice and climate science. We're talking about forestry and reforestation, design solutions, um, and like you said, the food, egg solutions, energy. There's just a lot of uh, exciting voices, important voices, a real diversity of voices. Um, and there, there are six um, lunchtime events that people can tune into over their, um, over their lunch breaks. And you can go to all, you can go to one. Um, yeah, and so for people who love the arts, there's plenty of performances. Uh, there is a blog that we're going to be uh, debuting a lot of um, commissioned writing. So um, great artists, writers, thinkers, um, providing reflective content um, that will debut um, just on our website. And there's, there's site-specific art that um, is set up in places um, that should be fun for people to explore. So there's a work called Unweaving um, by Tia Kyo Bang Feng uh, that is going to be up at the trailhead at Theodore Worth Park. So people who are um, heading over for LOPA activities can also extend their time and see this piece, um, which uh, was actually displayed in, in Duluth um, a few months back, actually over the summer, um, but hasn't been seen in the Twin Cities. It's very stunning. So anyway, that's just a smattering. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a lot. Um, I mean, and I have I'm excited about the future because we will eventually be coming back together and doing all this stuff together. So, you know, we're pointing to where we're headed. Um, I'm, you know, we're, I'm already working with uh, the orchestras to talk about, you know, next year and what we're going to do together, what we'll be um, commissioning. And uh, so the future is bright. I think this year was important that we didn't stop everything. Um, even though it, it's hard to, you know, it, it's hard to uh, pull together a festival um, right now, but I, I think that there's a lot that people um, will find joy in. I hope they do. Well, there's there's a market for joy. And so, yeah. <laughs> so thank you for everything you're doing to pull this together because Greater Miss P works with, you know, hundreds and, and hundreds of newcomers who move to this place from across the country and the world. And we know there are so many great things here, but it can be hard to find. Yeah. Even if you live here, it's hard to find. And so I think the power of the Great Northern, you know, bringing all these different experiences together kind of into this hub makes it much more accessible. And, and even if you've, you know, lived here for 20 years and you've participated in a lot of these things, there's something here that you don't know about that you're going to learn. Um, I'll just say this is your first year leading the Great Northern. So, you know, why not make it this year? Um, what are you most excited about? I know. Uh, so I've been asked this before, and I feel like it's a very unfair question since I'm an artistic director, and I don't want to play favorites on projects. But I will say that what I'm most excited about in general is um, 
uh, all the different takes on winter that will be presented within the festival. So I think a lot of us felt a real fear as we faced this COVID winter. Um, and I think there's a, uh, there is a lot of winter left. So I, I hope that the Great Northern will be a midwinter light that invigorous, invigorates us um, as we begin this new year. I believe our programming will give people ideas and prompts to get outside, to get moving, to get um, creative and to do good. And um, I hope that people see this festival as a true reflection of the North um, and, and what we value. So that is the hope. That's what I'm excited to get behind. And um, yeah, and we're just a couple weeks away now. So, so I invite um, all, all of the listeners here to, to sign up for stuff. So on the website, just uh, so people know how to plug in, you know, each event, ha you know, has um, a sign up. So if you're interested in the Climate Solutions Festival, you can sign up so that you get all the information you need on the day the thing happens. And so everything has a sign up contingent or a direct uh, directive. Um, so just people should set, spend some time on the website looking through the events. And I know that everyone will find something that resonates. Fantastic. Well, thanks again for what you and your team are doing to bring this to life. And uh, I can't wait to check it out. And we encourage everyone to do the same. Thank you. Thank you to Greater MSP for your support. Absolutely.